ಬಿಸಿಲು ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಎಲ್ಲಾನ ಸುಸ್ತಾಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ತಿರುಗಿ ಹೋಗಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಎಲ್ಲಂದ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮಲ್ಕೊಂಡಾಕೋ ಜಾಗ ಇರಲ್ಲ once celebrated as india's garden city where tree lined avenues sprawling parks and tranquil lakes kept temperatures pleasantly mild bengaluru now confronts an existential crisis bengaluru's mean air temperature has been rising at 0.23 degrees celsius per decade since 1975 what was uh, 19 degrees in 90s became 21 degrees in 2000 and today it's about 36 to 37 degrees celsius this is the change some major reasons include unplanned urban sprawl the disappearance of hundreds of water bodies and relentless paving of green spaces everything is becoming a hard surface where did the first big bus stand happen in bangalore that happened in a lake bed and it's the city's most vulnerable who had no hand in this transformation who bear the brunt with little to no respite from the extreme heat parku adu idre salp alkulagi irutta madam so how do the vulnerable communities cope with the city's rising heat how does the shrinking of blue green infrastructure further expose these people to a harsher climate is the government civil and scientific society working towards mitigating the effect of this intensifying crisis let's explore this and more in this episode of urban heatscapes Bengaluru home to over 14 million people widely known as the silicon valley of india is located in the temperate zone The city experiences a tropical savanna climate with distinct wet and dry seasons. With its blend of technology, culture and greenery, Bengaluru is infamous for its slow traffic, which is a reflection of not just a rapidly growing city but also an increasingly intense heat center. The mean air temperature in Bengaluru has been rising at 0.23 degrees Celsius per decade since 1975. The increase is more profound in the last decade at nearly half a degree per decade. The root of the problem experts suggest is the rapid reduction of blue green infrastructure. Basically, the water bodies and parks. In 1973, Bangalore boasted 68% green cover. Now, it's only around 6%. Studies also suggest that there has been a dramatic 79% decline in water bodies, largely due to intense urbanization. The city of Bangalore has experienced an unplanned irresponsible urbanization. So earlier our architectures were nature friendly. you know two story building or three story we had a good uh, ventilation etc but unfortunately converting those plot into a mega apartment thing has contributed to the increase in temperature it also comes from how we manage urban uh, urban scapes uh, in in the way we do uh, landscape how we start looking at street street patterns how much of shading which we can offer eventually Center for Science and Environment conducted a decadal analysis in which the surface temperatures were mapped. Now the, when the surface temperatures were crossing a threshold of 41 degrees Celsius, the areas under those were considered as heat centers. And the regions which were having the recurrent of these heat centers like for 6 or more years were termed as heat stressed areas. So if we look at this map, already 43% of Bengaluru is under heat stress and the major areas are the outskirts of the city wherein actually the new constructions are coming up other than this the center of the city also where there is a lot of congestion faces this kind of heat stress while the data shows the scale of the crisis its harshest impact is felt in the daily routines of people like nagalakshmi She walks up to 6 to 7 kilometers each day under the scorching sun, sweeping streets with little to no relief. I 
ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ನಾಗಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ನಾನು ಬಿ ಪಿ ಎಮ್ ಪಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾಯಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ವರ್ಷದಿಂದ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾಯಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಇದೇ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾಯಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಆರು ಗಂಟೆಯಿಂದ ತಿರ್ಗಿ ರೋಡ್ ಕೆಲ್ಸಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಬಿಸಿಲು ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಬಿಸಿಲು ಹೋಗೋವರೆಗೂ ನಮಗೆ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೇಕು ಹ್ಞೂ ಹೌದು ವಾಸ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಜಾಗ ಬೇಕು ನಮಗೆ ಏ ಐದು ಲೀಟ್ರ್ ನೀರು ಕುಡಿಬೇಕು ಅಂತಾರೆ ನೀರೇ ಸಿಕ್ಕಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಕುಡಿಯಾಕ ದುಡ್ಡು ತಾ ಅದು ನೀರು ತಗೋಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ದುಡ್ಡು ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನೀರು ತಗೋಬೇಕು ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎಮ್ ಪಿ ಆಫೀಸರ್ಸ್ಗೂ ಆಮ್ ಲೋಗೇ ಲೆಟರ್ ದಿಯ ಪಾರ್ಕ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟೆನ್ ಓ ಕ್ಲಾಕ್ ತಕ್ ಓಪನ್ ಆಯ್ ಉಸ್ಕೆ ಬಾದ್ ಮೇ ವೋ ಬಂದ್ ಹೋ ಜಾಯಾಗ ಬಹುತ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಮೇ ಬಹುತ ಜಾದ ಪಾರ್ಕ್ ಐಸ ಹೇ ಇಸ್ಕೆ ಲೇ ವೋ ವರ್ಕರ್ ಲೋಗ ಜಾಕೆ ಪಾರ್ಕ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಬೈತ ನೈ ಸಕ್ತ ಹೇ ವರ್ಕರ್ಸ್ಗು ತೋಡ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಕರ್ನ ಹೇ ಎ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಮೇ ಕಿಧರ್ ಬಿ ಜಾಕೆ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ನೈ ಕರ್ ಸಕ್ತ ಹೇ ಪಾರ್ಕ್ ನೈ ಹೇ ದೂಸರ ಪೇಡ್ ಬಿ ಬಹುತ ಜಾದ ಕಮ್ ಹೋ ಕಮ್ ಹೋ ರಾ ಹೇ ಪೆಹಲೆ ತ ಜಾದ ಪೇಡ್ ತ ಅಭಿ ಪೇಡ್ ಬಹುತ ಜಾದ ಕಮ್ ಹೋ ಗಯಾ ಬಿಸಿಲಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಕಟ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಇದು ತುಂಬ ಬಿಸಿಲಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ನೆರಳಿರ್ತೈತೆ ಅಂತ ಕಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಬೇಸಿಗೆ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂದರೆ ಎಲ್ಲೇ ಒಂದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಗಿಡ ಪಡ ಅಂತಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿಕ್ಕರೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಹತ್ರ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಕುಂತು ಎದ್ದಾಳ್ತವು ಅದು ಏನು ಗಿಡ ಪದ ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂದರೆ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಹೊತ್ತು ಕುಂದ್ರೋದು ಎದ್ದಾಳು ಪಾರ್ಕ್ ಗೀರ್ಕಂಬದು ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಟುಡೇ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೇವ್ಡ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಚೋಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ಕೇಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಡ್ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ರಿಟೇನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ರೇಟ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಸೀ ವೆನ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ಕೇಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಪೋರಸ್ ಇಟ್ ರಿಟೇನ್ಸ್ ದ ಮಾಯಿಶ್ಚರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮಾಡ್ರೇಟ್ ದ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಕ್ಲೈಮೇಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಶೋಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ವೇರ್ ಎವರ್ ವೆಜಿಟೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪ್ರೇಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಟೂ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಲೋವರ್ there are some of the areas which are uh, under the forest department those are the urban forests unfortunately it has been encroached by the influential section of the society we need to get those thing back and convert that into green pockets apart from the loss of blue and green cover experts point to another major reason behind bengaluru's rising temperatures urban heat island effect urban heat island effect is when the city core faces higher temperatures than the rural surroundings now this happens because the city core has a lot of buildings lot of paved areas roads also parkings a lot of vehicles all these factors contribute and make that core of the city hotter than the rural counterparts which largely have uh, green spaces agricultural activities etc So when there are a lot of buildings and paved surfaces what happens is that the solar radiation that is falling onto these surfaces gets trapped now the heat energy keeps transferring from one surface to another and does not go back as it should I think urban design plays a very critical role in uh, in the urban heat island uh, so large parts of how we plan cities come from basic passive level ideas of uh, how they are oriented what is heat gain when we start planting buildings in them it also means that we are consuming more energy it comes from a point that the your air conditions are going to run even more and it's a vicious cycle right uh, if the air conditioners are going to run more it, that means you're going to start heating the the microclimate uh, even more you know glass facade building is not suitable for the tropical climate of bangalore chennai hyderabad etc in fact wherever the high rise buildings are there temperatures are at least 2 to 3 degrees higher than the other location and we've seen that in bangalore uh, in certain zone we've seen temperature shoot up by as much as 2 and a half to 3 degrees uh, from what uh, is normally predicted you can't say no to development but i think to be careful to be responsible around it becomes important unaware of the policies and projects being discussed elsewhere nagalakshmi continues her daily routine she walks us through the streets she sweeps every day along the way she pauses for a cup of tea then leads us to the shaded spot where she rests so 
So if we zoom into this map where Nagalakshmi actually resides and works, we can see that the red part is actually the heat stressed areas. She starts her day by walking towards her office, which is around two kilometers. She punches in and then she goes on to sweep the nearby streets. Post that in the evening, she comes back to the office, punches out and goes back to her house. Approximately, she covers around seven kilometers of the day throughout the walk and the majority of the day wherein she spends or she recites falls under these heat stressed areas. Ms. Nitya, who works as the executive engineer in the Lakes Division of BBMP, walks us through the on-ground process of lake rejuvenation, starting with removing encroachments and diverting sewage inflow to desilting lake beds, developing wetlands and planting native vegetation. So, uh, we have 202 lakes in uh, BBMP limits. Of these 202 lakes, we have 183 live lakes. The other 19 lakes are classified as disused lake. So there are many lakes uh, that have become disused due to development. The development of lakes and uh, planting of trees have rapidly increased. So this was the 16 acres land that was uh, given to us. So these are the storm water drain, the artificial storm water drains that were constructed to drain out the water so that there's no flooding happening in the upstream. And also there's no water entering the lake. So this is under progress. Uh, probably in another two, three months, we'll see this lake full and overflowing. Already <laughs> At Art Park, Indian Institute of Science, Dr. Vaibhav and his colleagues are deep in discussion, refining a model that uses artificial intelligence to make heat forecasts more precise. Their system aims to predict extreme heat events at the taluk level offering a tool that could help cities prepare better for the heat impacts on workers like Nagalakshmi. I, uh, the strength of AI is that you know it can combine data in ways which we cannot perceive. As long as they get enough data and they have seen enough of the data, they can give you better forecasts. But if they have not seen it, and that's one of the problems that we are also facing when we are moving into climate changes, we have not seen this data. Now, I think as long as you ensure that you're feeding it good data, it's ingesting good data, then, then it won't hallucinate, right? Mm. And therefore, the, the predictive power is expected to keep improving Improve. to the point where we would like to eventually get to better granularity at a hyper-local hyper local mm. sort of level of prediction. It has a state, district, and then you can pick the sub-district. And then uh, it also has a lead time, which you can see from for a 10 day lead time and for a given taluk it will give you for each day what is the heat risk for that particular taluk. Apart from this, uh, you know, we will have a information on infrastructure. Basically that will tell us what kind of, uh, you know, cooling centers have been set up, where are the nearby PHCs are there uh, and the things like that. So understanding the vulnerable population, the socio-economic things, the health vulnerability, all these angles, bringing in these angles will provide a little more specific communication which can help save a lot more lives. So this is the angle what we are taking. Effective early warning and uh, given to the public at a right time will actually bring down uh, you know, the impact of economy and life and you know, other factors. While people from different disciplines draft plans and shape policies in their own comfort zones, Nag Lakshmi's walk continues in her heat zone. On her way back, she points towards the only public toilet along the entire two-kilometer stretch where she works. The dilemma is clear. To cope with the heat, she needs to stay hydrated. 
ನಾವು ಆವಾಗ ಆವಾಗ ರೀಸೆಸ್ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಜಾಗ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನೀರನ್ನು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಕುಡಿತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ವಾಸ ಇದು ಬಾತ್ರೂಮ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನೀರು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಕುಡಿಯೋದು ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೆ ನೋಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನೀರನ್ನು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಶಿ ರೀಚಸ್ ಹರ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೈಸ್ ಡೌನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಬೇರ್ ಫ್ಲೋರ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹೌಸ್ ದಟ್ ಫೀಲ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ಲಿ ಕೂಲರ್ for now this is her moment of rest